Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about the central limit theorem again, but we're going to approach this from a visual perspective. So all of you visual learners out there, I hope this helps you. Let's get started. All right, so we're going to go over to the computer and work through an animation together to try to get a better grasp of what the central limit theorem says. All right, so we have this really great animation to show you. This animation is for the visual learners who want to understand the central limit theorem a little bit more. The central limit theorem is really hard to conceptualize when it's, you know, using a bunch of math notation, but this is going to make the central limit theorem make sense a little bit more. Now this is a, a public domain resource and so you can use this, you can distribute it however you want. Um, this was provided by Rice Virtual Labs and Statistics. So thank you guys for making this resource. It's really useful to show it to my students. And there's a lot going on over here. So I want to break down every single thing and then we're going to um, pr uh, see what this can say about the central limit theorem. So first off, you have this graph at the top. It looks like a bell curve, right? It's basically a histogram. Um, now, this histogram has a sample that's essentially infinite, a really, really, really large sample. Let's consider it like a million people are in the sample. And it's really hard to see, but on the left side of this bell curve is, is the number zero. And on the right side of that bell curve is 32. So it looks like the average is 16. And we actually have statistics here to tell us what, that, what the average is and the standard deviation is. So it's hard to see, so I'm gonna zoom in real quick on the, the statistics of this bell curve. Now the blue um, statistic there, which is the top one, it says the mean equals 16. So that is the average of that bell curve that you're looking at. And then the third row is the only other row that I want you to look at, which uh, uh, is the standard deviation. It's the red one, it says the standard deviation is five. So that's some statistics about this population that we're going to be sampling. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take five people from this sample, from this population, sorry. So I'm going to take a sample of size five from this population. Now those five people are going to have values corresponding to them. The values might be somewhere around zero, they might be 32, they might be 18, but I want you to tell me this. What do you think these values are going to be close to? Pause the video and answer that question. All right, so when we take five people from this uh, bell curve, the numbers that we should be getting are probably going to be really close to the number 16 because 16 is the average. And it looks like a bulk of the population is around 16. There's actually this, I don't know if, I hope you can see it, but there's this little red bar right here which pretty much tells you where a good... Uh, chunk of the data is. Now that red bar is actually one standard deviation away. So that is the uh, five away from the number 60, uh, 16. And it's actually really important to know that region because that region represents 68% of the data. So we should see about two or three of our, of our five people that we're going to be choosing to be in that region right there. Now, that being said, this is how it's going to work. I'm going to take five people. Those five people are going to be recorded on the graph underneath. So you're going to see five gray bricks drop. Those five gray bricks are going to drop on the corresponding values. And that's going to be my sample. So I'm picking five random people in the sample. And that, those five people are going to record it on the second graph. And then the average of those five people are going to be recorded on the third graph. And you're going to all see it kind of animated. And I'm going to explain it as it goes. So here we're going to start with picking five people. And then we're going to compute the average. We kind of did this in the last couple of lectures. So let's see this animation together. So there's our five people. And then there's the average. So we have the five gray blocks over here, which, is rep which are representing the, the sample that I collected. Looks like I got numbers that are most of them close to 16. So this is kind of, this is something that you would expect. And then we recorded the average. Now the average is not 16. This average right here looks to be a little bit bigger than 16. That's okay though. That's something that you should expect. You should expect your test when you sample five people, you should expect an average that's not exactly 16. That's totally normal. Now let's take another sample of five people and we're going to record the, the next average. 
So we're going to see another five bricks drop. One, uh, kind of paused. Oh, there we go. There's our five people and we recorded the next average. So if you notice here, um, these five people are a little bit closer to 16. It looks like we have an outlier way over here on the right side, which kind of skewed things a little bit to the right. And we have, um, we dropped another blue brick over here. And this blue brick um, happened to be next to the one that it was before. Now we have two averages recorded, so we can actually calculate the, the average and the standard deviation of these two numbers. Although it's kind of useless to calculate the average and the standard deviation of these two numbers uh, because it's only two numbers. So uh, for right now though, you should know that the average is, it says zero, but that will fix itself later on. And the standard deviation is zero, that will also fix itself later on. So let's take another five people real quick. Here are the five people. And there is our average. Notice that this average was much farther to the left. And our mean and standard deviation is kind of messed up right now still. That's okay, we're gonna keep going. Take new five people, and we get another blue, bro blue brick dropped. And we're gonna keep doing this over and over again. New five people, new bl brick dropped. New five people, and another brick is dropped. Now I can, I can keep doing this animation over and over again, but um, it's kind of hard to see what's going on with these blue bricks. That kind of looks like a random design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate this process five times in a row. So if I, if I, I'm clicking right now this animated button right here. And if I click this button that says five, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate this process that we did five times. So far we've done six of them. I'm going to do another five more and it's going to record all five blue bricks right at the same time. So that's the next five bricks. Here's the next five bricks. Here's the next five bricks. Here's the next five bricks. And we can keep going on and on and on and on. And I'm adding more and more and more and more uh, averages here. And I'm just going to keep uh, hitting this five button and it's going to keep, I'm keep sampling five people and recording the averages. What do you notice about all these averages though that um, are in the blue here? It looks like I'm getting like a bell curve. And the answer is yes, I am getting a bell curve. Now I could go five at a time, but I'm actually gonna go by 10,000 at a time. And you're gonna notice right away that this, uh, these blue bricks that are dropped are eventually going to look into the shape of a bell curve distribution. Now I'm going to make some notes real quick because there's a lot to say about this. So I'm gonna hit F11. And I'm going to make some notes. Alrighty, so first off, you should notice that the average here is not 16. It's actually 15.99. But that will fix itself later on. As we add more averages, um, we're going to eventually get an average of the averages to be 16. So this average represents the average, and this is going to be kind of strange, average of the averages. The average of the averages should be close to the true average, which is 16, but it's not. And that's just because we haven't done enough samples yet. We haven't um, collected enough data yet. That's okay. Um, the, this is not this is the uh, this is not the anomaly though the anomaly is actually the standard deviation right here it's really hard to see that but that number is excuse me I need to fix this there we go this standard deviation says 2.24 but the standard deviation here is 5. That's a little strange. The standard deviation is different. Now take a look at this. I've been taking a sample size of five right here. This says that my sample is five units, meaning I'm taking five people from this group here. I'm taking five people from here and those bricks are dropped here, 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 let's say maybe one here and another one here. And so that's, those are my uh, samples of five. Now, 
interestingly enough, if you take this standard deviation five right here and you divide it by the square root of five, you're going to get 2.24. Now this is not, this is not like coincidental. This is actually intentional mathematics, but let's tr test that. I'm going to take five divide by the square root of five. And if I hit enter, I get 2.236, which rounds to 2.24. That's kind of interesting. The mathematics behind that's a little bit complex, but we're going to be talking about this phenomenon right now. I just lost my pen and I just found my pen. All right, let's get back to this animation because there's just so much more to say about this animation. So I'm going to go back to the animation and I'm going to clear everything. So in this case, now I'm going to, instead of taking a sample size of five, I'm going to take a sample size of, let's do 10 this time. So here I'm going to take 10 people. Here are my 10 people. And then there's my average. And my average looks to be really close to 16 this time. So I took a, um, I took 10 people and those are my 10 people. And it looks like my average was recorded here and it looks to be really close to 16. Let's take another 10 people. Again, that average looks really, really close to 16. Let's take another 10 people. This average is much less than 16. And this is kind of like an anomaly. You would expect this to happen every once in a while, but it does happen. And so now instead of, you know, watching 10 bricks drop at a time, I'm going to simulate that process five times in a row. So here we go. Let's do another five, another five, another five, another five, another five, and so on. And instead of going by five times in a row, I'm going to go by 10,000 times in a row. And pretty quickly, you're going to see that this blue curve or this blue histogram is basically a normal curve distribution. It's a bell curve. Now I'm going to go back to some math and I'm going to record some things here. I'm going to take some notes. I'm going to note some things for one. The average of the averages is still 16, which is something that you should expect. Um, the average of the averages are 16, but the standard deviation here is 1.59. But the standard deviation of the population is five. Now take a look at this. If I take five, my standard deviation and divide by the square root of 10 on my calculator, I'm going to do that five divided by the square root of 10. I'm going to get 1.58, 1.5811. One. So I'm getting a standard deviation of 1.59 and that's not coincidental. There is a reason to that. Um, and we're going to actually develop that formula later on. We're going to be able to find the standard deviation later on. Now, that being said, if I keep going here, eventually that standard deviation is going to go to 1.58. I hope let's go by 100,000 by at a time. There we go. It turned to 1.58, which is what the true standard deviation should be for that. So, um, that's kind of coincidental. Now the central limit theorem is a little bit different than what we've been discussing. Let me explain what the central limit limit theorem states. Now, if I have a distribution that looks like this, there we go. Now that's a very strange distribution, right? It's definitely not a bell curve shape. So I'm going to clear the lower three real quick and I'm going to start gathering a sample here. Now I'm going to gather a sample size of five again, and I'm going to animate this. So in this case, those are my five. Now my average of this distribution, it says 16.84. Now 16.84 is somewhere around here. And so this blue dot is pretty far away from that. Let's do another five. Here's another five. And it landed over there, which is a little bit to the left of 16.84. Let's do another five. There's another average recorded. Now I'm going to repeat this simulation over and over again. 
And let's see if we get something. It looks like I'm getting a bell curve. That's really cool. Let's go by 10,000 at a time. Now, this we have a bell curve. Let's do it by 100,000 at a time to make sure that we actually get the true values here. So here we have a histogram, but it turns out that this is actually not a bell curve. There is a little bit of a skew to the left. So it looks like there's actually more data on the left side than the right side. And it's hard to see that, but this is where the central limit theorem comes into play. It's easier to see when our sample size is really small. So I'm going to take a sample size of two this time. So we're going to animate this process and I'm just going to collect two people and record their averages. So those are the two people they are way far off and there's the average. Here's another two people and there's that average. And here we can do that again and again and again and again and again. And now I'm actually going to go by 10,000 at a time. Now, is that a bell curve? Let's go by 100,000 at a time. Maybe it'll turn into a bell curve eventually. That is definitely not a bell curve. In fact, it wasn't a bell curve for n equals 5 either. In fact, it's never going to be a bell curve. But if my sample size gets bigger and bigger, if I choose a sample size of 5, let's look what this looks like. I'm going to choose a different sample distribution real quick to kind of mess things up a little bit. Let's try this one. That's definitely not a bell curve. Let's try n equals 2, which was should be even worse. Let's see what that looks like over time. Yeah, that's definitely not a bell curve. That looks like a funky bell curve to me. It's definitely not a bell curve. n equals 5. Let's see how that looks like by 10,000 at a time. Still not a bell curve. Let's try n equals, what's the next one here? n equals 10. Let's see what this would look like. That looks more like a bell curve. It's getting there. It's getting much better, but it's still kind of off a little bit. Let's go to n equals 16. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. Oh, there's still kind of, it's still not a bell curve. It's still a little bit skewed to the left. So this is the point. This is the central limit theorem. This is what it says. If this number gets bigger and bigger, six. so if I start from 2, then go to 5, then go to 10, then go to 16, as my sample sizes get bigger, this blue distribution is going to be more and more like a normal distribution. And that's what the central limit theorem states. Now, side note, this was n equals 16. And this standard deviation over here was 11.27. Just kind of an interesting side note here. But if you take 11.27, which was this standard deviation of the population, and divide it by the square root of 16, my sample size, sizes, I should say, this gives me a number, what is that, 11.27 divided by the square root of 16 is 2.8175. And what do you know? That happens to be the standard deviation of this curve, of this curve right here. And notice, this isn't even a bell curve. That formula still works, which is really weird, really bizarre. Uh, but we'll talk about that formula later on in some other lecture. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next lecture. You just watched a video from Amore Learning. We provide free math videos and we offer many online courses. We also provide free math tutoring via YouTube Live every Thursday and Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video to get access to all of our free content. And put a comment in the comment section if you have any math questions. Check out all of our courses on amorelearning.org.